Market, Finland are under six inches of snow and train and bus services badly hit. And there's worse to come. The bad weather will become more widespread. The Met Office has issued a severe weather warning for the whole of England and Wales and parts of Scotland. Well, here's the latest then on the travel chaos caused by the snow on the roads. Many routes are impassable. There are warnings about treacherous conditions on the M1 and M25, the M6 near Manchester and the A66 in northwest England. The highways agency is recommending that people should travel only if absolutely necessary. At the airport, British Airways has cancelled all flights from Heathrow until 5 o'clock this evening. There's also severe disruption at Stansted, Luton, Southampton and London City Airport are both closed. While public transport is also badly affected, most bus services in London have been suspended. Many rail services are experiencing delays and the underground is only partially operational. Hundreds of schools have been closed across Suffolk, Essex, Kent, Sussex, Surrey and Lincolnshire. Well, in a moment, we'll bring you the latest on the situation on the roads and rail in the air and on what the forecasters are predicting for later. First, though, here's Colette Macbeth. For many this morning, it was a walk to work or nothing at all. The southeast hasn't seen snowfall like this for 18 years. London's most famous landmark may have looked picture postcard under the thick snow, but the extreme weather was causing chaos in the capital. In the rush hour, not one of London's 8,000 buses was in operation. This is Victoria Station, where they would normally line up. Well, everything shuts down, it seems. Like the tube wasn't working, the buses weren't working, taxis weren't working, so wherever you are, you were stuck. Absolutely diabolical. There's no gritting on the road, there's nothing. We're like a third world country. Well, it is exceptional. I mean, we haven't had a, a circumstance like this for over two decades. We were prepared in the sense of all our, our cold weather plans on the, on the underground were put into place. But I think actually the, the volume of the snow falling during the middle of the night was very difficult for us. Some bus services are now beginning to come back online again. But the roads around London are jammed. This is the M25. At one stage, there was a 32-mile-long tailback. And at many train stations, the notices that greeted passengers were as bad as they could get on a Monday morning. All services suspended, said this one. At Heathrow, this Cyprus Airways plane slipped off the taxiway onto the grass. No one was hurt, but both runways were closed for some time. Only the northern runway is now back in operation. But BA have cancelled all flights until 5 o'clock this evening from Heathrow. At Southampton, the runway was also closed and there were delays at Gatwick and Stansted. At Luton, flights were suspended for the morning. If they lose the revenue, which they will be losing today, and I reckon for British Airways, you are looking at um, you know, certainly into the millions, probably for overall for the airlines, maybe £10 million for today. Much more disruption during the rest of the week as planes and crews are in the wrong position. It is exactly what they do not need. So far, the southeast has borne the brunt of the snowfall, with school closures across the region. In Brighton, roads were barely passable. This lorry driver in Hampshire learnt just how treacherous the conditions were. In Gravesend, in Kent, some at least had taken heed of the warnings to avoid all travel. It was a bit hard this morning, obviously, getting up, tried to get to work. The roads were really bad, so probably have to take the day as holiday, but we thought we'd come out and make the most of it. So, yeah, it's nice, it's good fun for the little ones. I just I do try snowballs. You do snowballs? Yeah. But the bad weather is moving east and northwards. This BBC weather camera in Hull shows conditions there are already bad. While these scenes in York show few places are escaping the snow. Those still unaffected by the bad weather should be warned. The snowfall will get heavier around rush hour, moving through the Midlands into the north and Scotland. For some, it will cause much more disruption, but others will just want to enjoy it while they can. Colette Macbeth, BBC News. Well, our correspondent Louisa Baldini is at Heathrow Airport for us now. Louisa, we saw the plane that had uh, skidded off the taxiway. Tell us about that and indeed the situation in general there. Well, the snow's almost stopped falling here, but the operation continues behind me to try and dislodge that stranded Cypress Airways flight CY332 from Larnaca. 
landed safely this morning at about 8.30, but as it was taxiing, it came off the tarmac because basically the pilot couldn't see the markings under the snow. The front wheel got stuck in the grass. You may be able to see the nose of the plane is slightly dipped down. And we've been watching fire brigade officers and workmen literally digging with spades to try and dislodge it. Now, there were no injuries to passengers, and it was, in the end, a minor incident. But this gives you some indication as to the havoc that snow can play at airports. Now, the British Airports Authority, the company that runs Heathrow, tell me that they've got all their uh, snow plows, uh, ice cutters, 58 vehicles in total, and They've been working around the clock since 3 o'clock yesterday. They haven't got enough space to put the cleared snow. Only one of the runways is operational. It means that over uh, 760 flights have been cancelled. It's going to be costing airlines millions, and it will create a backlog that could take de days to clear. All right, Louisa, thank you very much indeed. Well, for the latest on the situation on the roads then and railway stations, uh, I'm joined by Nick Duncar from BBC Radio 5 Live Travel. Hello. Well, what is the update? Hi there. Well, it's not necessarily good news, but let's start with the motorways. As you saw on some of those pictures there, the M25 through Surrey has been really horrendous through the course of the morning. Uh, a whole series of accidents. It seemed like as soon as one lorry broke down and was cleared to the side of the road, another one broke down or another one jackknifed. Still very long delays between around Junction 7 and Junction 9 as you head towards Leatherhead. In the opposite direction, it's not much fun either. As far as the airports are concerned, as you just heard from Louisa, uh, Heathrow, serious problems. No BMI flights at all today. Uh, BA say no short haul for the rest of the day. All flights suspended from Southampton, London City and Luton. Gatwick, Stansted, Leeds, Bradford, Newcastle, all suffering delays. And even other airports like Edinburgh and Glasgow will suffer a knock-on effect just because planes are out of position. Trains, finally. Well, getting in and out of London is the real problem. Many services suspended. All the rest severely disrupted, and any trains that even pass through London will suffer for the rest of the day. Right, lots of complaints about lack of gritting as well. They've sent out a lot of gritters overnight, but I think the problem was there's just been too much snow in too much of the country. I just don't think they could cope. All right, OK, well, thank you very much. And, of course, stay tuned to Vive Live, of course, for um, updates, and, of course, your local radio as well. Thanks very much for the time being, Nick. Thank you. Well, let's uh, go around the country then uh, for the latest. In a moment, we'll join Fiona Trott in Birmingham and Jenny Hill at Gravesend in Kent. First, though, Nicola Pearson is in central London for us. And, Nicola, um, <laughs> it's, it's astonishment from some that the capital can be brought to a halt. Uh, a lack of preparation, people are saying. What is the situation and why weren't we prepared for this? Well... It has caused a huge problem across London. We've never really seen anything like this. Let me show you behind me. This is the back of Victoria Station. You can see all these trains here should be commuter services, should be running in and out of uh, Victoria Station, but not today. They are at a complete standstill, nothing moving, and they probably won't be moving by the end of the day. So if you have struggled to get into work and you've come through uh, Victoria Station, you're probably going to struggle to then uh, get home again. Now, the picture is very similar on the uh, underground trains. Uh, problems there, only really the Victoria and the Waterloo and City line running fully, so any of the other lines are going to have uh, difficulty with and buses, London buses, hugely problematic. No buses at all this morning, some now coming back into service, but people are going to really struggle to move around the capital today. The only bit of tiny bit of good news I can give you is that the uh, Gatwick Express running from here, from Victoria, uh, is running a very, very limited service, so people may be able to get to the airport. All right, Nicola, thank you very much indeed. What about the rest of the region then? Let's turn to Jenny Hill uh, in Kent. How are things looking there? Well, within the last hour, conditions here have really deteriorated. Snow is still falling heavily onto the up to six inches of snow which fell in some parts of this county overnight. This is, of course, one of the worst hit parts of the country along with the rest of the southeast. Now, that said, let me show you this motorway here. This is the A2, and we're told that at the moment it's fine. Traffic appears to be flowing fairly freely. The problem, of course, is that other road networks which would link on to this motorway um, are snarled up with snow. Now, councils are telling us they face a constant battle to keep those roads clear. We're told in Essex, 2,000, nearly 2,000 miles of road are treated, being treated at the moment by both 
snow ploughs and gritting lorries. Up in the northwestern Gateshead, we're told that 400 council workers are currently struggling to just shift the sheer weight of snow. To the other side of where we're standing, let me show you one of the minor roads um, which is causing so much concern here in Kent. Um, it's this type of road which is being described as problematic and you can probably see that again in the last hour more snow is starting to stick to that road surface so a lot of concern here it's a difficult situation already and it's only expected to get worse well indeed jenny thank you very much indeed and it will become more widespread as you say fiona trot is in birmingham how are they preparing for it where you are well, it sounds quite quiet at the moment in here, Kate, doesn't it? But they are telling us it's the calm before the storm. The Highways Agency says it's facing a big challenge this afternoon. More of that in a moment. Let me just show you very briefly what's happening right now. You can see that map behind me there. The big red line going from east to west is the M6. The one to the left of it going south is the M5. If there were any problems, those motorways would change colour. They haven't. Just to the right of that as well, you can see some close-ups of the M42. Just look at that. You can see lorries, cars, all travelling very, very easily. That's because the snow hasn't been sticking to the roads yet. But we're being told that around three hours' time, up to 10 centimetres will fall here in the West Midlands. What workers here have done is send out 32 gritters to treat those major roads before the snow arrives. We also have around 20 patrol vehicles out there too. Their job is to keep the traffic moving because that heavy snowfall is expected to arrive here in the Midlands at the start of the rush hour. Kate. Fiona, thank you very much indeed. Fiona, drop there. Uh, Jenny and Nicola, thank you. Well, as we've heard, then warnings of more snow later. Now we're joined by the BBC weather forecaster, Thomas Schaffernack. Uh, and we keep saying we haven't seen scenes like this for 18 years. And unusually enough, London and the South East being worst here. Absolutely. What's actually happened that the area that's been affected worst has been the Thames Valley and Greater London, which is, of course, where we've got the transport network, which is densest in the whole of the UK. So that's why we're seeing such chaos. Now, in some parts of London, we've actually seen up to 20 centimetres of snow. That's eight inches. So obviously, we've been saying it's the worst for, for 18 years. But what's going to happen during the course of the evening is we're yet seeing another band of snow, which is just starting to affect Kent right now. And we could see another 10 or 15 centimetres. And it's not unreasonable to suggest that by the end of the night we could see in some parts of London a foot of snow but the main thing is the main concern is actually northern England and the Pennines where we could see something like half a meter of snow and of course we've got strong winds and drifting as well with that so there's still a lot of snow on the way. Goodness all right Thomas thank you very much indeed thank you. Well Thomas we'll be back with a full weather forecast You've been having says well these are just a few from you this morning. Tony Hathaway took this shot in Epsom Downs in Surrey first thing this morning. He measured more than a foot of snow. He said he couldn't make it to work as all trains on his line were cancelled. Vitautas Stabenskis took this picture of his grandson enjoying the snow this morning in Northampton. Daniel Bugord measured 10 inches of snow in his garden in Croydon, was diligent enough to record it for posterity. And uh, David Shipway from Hammersmith in West London stepped out of the front door this morning to find his children had been very busy building that snowman to greet him on the front doorstep. OK, well, let's go now to Spencer's Wood in Berkshire and our correspondent, Robert Hall, who is there. Robert. Yes, indeed, Kate. And uh, slightly more serious note now, because we're here just to make a point. Here you see a treated road. We've seen traffic moving quite fast here, 50, 60 miles an hour. Snow still coming down. You turn off the treated road into where we parked our vehicles, and you can see a very different road surface. And that picture repeated wherever we've been, really, today. Urban areas, the middle of Reading, sheets of ice, just off treated roads. What can you do about it? Well, we've been out with Richard uh, Fitzwater from the RAC. First of all, Richard, what are the dangers of people, even on roads that they know, well, what we found is uh, you may know the road, but once you come off um, some of these side roads, um, it's quite treacherous. Although you think you know the road, that there is a lot of lot of snow and ice. We've there. seen even I saw a chap this morning. He hit the curb. Even by hitting a curb, you can do a lot of damage. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, if if you if you judge your distances well, you're okay. Now. Obviously, we, go, we always have these things about lists of things in the car. You've even thrown a shovel into your car this morning. You can dig yourself out of trouble, can't you? That's right. I mean, it, you can use a, a shovel you keep at home just to put in the boot of the car if, if you've got snow around. Yeah, I mean, the there are these... I mean, that's a, that's a sort of folding shovel thing that you yeah. keep in there all the time. Yeah. And what about... A long list, but it's just a question of keeping warm, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, ideally, in this sort of scenario, keep a nice warm jacket in the boot of the car. Make sure your telephone's got plenty of 
battery power in it. And your car's got plenty of petrol? Yeah, absolutely. OK, Richard, thanks very much. And just one footnote from me. Hampshire Police in the last few minutes tell us 3,000 calls from members of the public this morning. Some people need to be out, but bear in mind that this snow is sporadic. It can affect you when you least expect it. So if you don't need to go out, don't.